So I can say that I wasn't entirely sure if to put this custom landscape material creation lesson before or after we learned about our auto landscape material. I decided to put this after everything because this kind of opens the door to even more in-depth customization and to kick things off to make things easy you might just want to use an auto landscape material they are perfectly good they're even more elaborate than you could probably put together in days of creation time sometimes depending on how elaborate the landscape material is Myself, I use auto landscape material. I don't really do much in the way of custom material creation, but I wanted to at least show you how we can create a material of our own for our landscape and then how we can use the paint feature to, to decide uh, in very specific detail where we might want to paint our terrain in a specific way. Now, the paint feature can be used with auto landscape materials as well, but I just wanted to take things from the top here and show you the basics of material creation. Now that we're a little bit more familiar with working with nodes, thanks to our PCG lesson, uh, I thought this would probably be a better time to kind of shoehorn this in at the end of our environment creation module, just before we move on to actual game programming, blueprint design. In this lesson, we are going to take a look at creating our own landscape material and also painting that landscape terrain. Let's go to File, New Level, and just open up a basic level. That way we will have a lit level that's basically ready to go. We can go ahead and delete that center floor area. And instead of that center floor area, we will create a landscape. So from the selection uh, mode pull down, we can go to landscape and then we can under manage, go to create our landscape. Just make sure that enable edit layers is ticked and click create. So in our content directory, let's go ahead and right click somewhere and click on to the material section and then click on the material option here. This will create a new material. Let's call it our, let's call it our landscape material. Go ahead and now open up our landscape material. So this is our material editor graph. From within this editor graph, there is a huge number of things that can be done. It is an entire course just to learn about all the elaborate things that you can do with material creation. For our purposes, luckily in this beginner's course, we're only going to scratch the surface and get a general idea of how to create materials. So let's start by grabbing some textures to use in our material. Remember, if you press Control and Shift, you can open up your content browser. And then let's browse on over to our, you know what, let's use our starter content folder. And then we can look into the textures folder of there. And then we can use some of these uh, Unreal Engine starter content materials. Let's grab, um, you know what, just for example, this might not look great but let's grab maybe the cobblestone options. And you can grab the regular image texture and you can grab the height map and you can also grab, I believe that's the emissive, but I can't remember exactly. So let's grab all three of those and drag and drop those into our, uh, into our graph. Like so, you can kind of separate them a little bit so you can uh, see where they are. So first things first, select all of the textures and on the left hand side, look for where it says sampler source. And then from here, we're going to choose shared wrap. This is important because it will allow us to use more textures later. Next, we want to right click somewhere in empty space and look for the make material attributes node and bring that in like so. So we are going to drag our image texture sample into the base color. And we are going to drag the red channel from our mask into ambient occlusion. And we are going to drag the green channel into the roughness pin. And for our normal map, AKA height map or bump map, we are going to drag the RGB into the normal, there it is, into the normal pin. So next we are going to add texture coordinates, which basically controls the tiling of a texture, which is a handy thing to have. So right click somewhere and look for texture coordinate. There we go, texture coordinate. And we are going to also create a constant, which is basically just uh, a number. On our constant node, right click on it and convert it to a parameter. And we can name this tile. Parameters basically allow us to change things without having to go back into our material blueprint. And this will make more sense a little bit later in this lesson. 
So let us now connect the tile parameter into B and we can connect the texture coordinate into A like so. And then we're going to actually take all of these, just select them all to move them all. And we're just going to move them a little bit more to this side. And then we can actually just connect the output into the UP UV pin for our three different textures like so. OK, so that is one of our texture samples all set up. Let's make two more. So go ahead and select all of these nodes, not including these, not including those, but just these ones in here. Go ahead and select them all. Press Control C on your keyboard to copy, or you can right click and copy like so. And then pan down a little bit, click somewhere and press Control V to paste. Let us do that one more time, a little bit further down, Control V to paste again. So let's scroll up to our center one here and let's swap around our texture samples. So in order to do this nice and easily, just click to highlight the top texture sample and press control space on your keyboard. And this will open up the texture content browser that we were previously looking at with our Unreal Engine starter content textures. I'm going to choose the three brick options right here to use for our next texture sample. So first I'm just going to click on the image map texture and I'm going to click on my texture sample here. And then over in this section down here, I'm just going to arrow in that brick texture sample. For the mask, I'm going to highlight there and then I'm going to click the mask here and then I'm going to arrow that in like so. And then for the normal map, same idea. Press control space to open our content browser, click our normal map to highlight it and then arrow it in like so. Okay, so that's all good. Now let us go down to our last one and do the same thing again. So let's see, let's take this old brick clay texture. That'll be fine. Or is that, or is that different enough? Let's actually take this concrete grime one and uh, click our texture sample here, arrow it in. Next one to go, click our, our mask, arrow it in, and then our height map, of course, as well. Concrete panels, concrete grime, concrete panels, poured. Uh, is that all the same? Well, I don't know. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. I don't. I think that I think those are all the same ones that match with each other. But even if not, it's okay. This is all just for example. So we've got our mask. We've got our no, our normal map. We've got our texture map, and so on and so forth. Now, the other thing that we need to do is connect this UV tiling cord texture coordinate. Uh, output to the other samples that we have here in in very in very much the same way as we have them connected above here. So all we need to do is take this and drag it into our additional pins like so. And one more. I'm actually going to I'm actually just going to grab all that and drag it down. So oops, drag it down so it'll be a little easier to connect. One, two, three. Oh. And like so. And once I'm done, I'm going to actually just put that nice and even and right there in the center. That looks all orderly and well configured. OK. It also occurred to me as I was mousing around that I may not have instructed how to actually maneuver around the graph viewport. Uh, of course, holding down the right mouse button will pan us around and scrolling in and scrolling out will zoom us in and zoom us out. When it came to copying and pasting, I was able to left click somewhere. And that's basically where you'll copy and paste your item to. So if I left click first here, that kind of makes that the invisibly active section. And when I paste, that is that becomes the top left corner of our, our pasted object. So sorry if I confused anybody there. Hope uh, maybe I should have mentioned that earlier on. But uh, well, now you know. So in order to paint on our landscape, we need to add a layered blend node. This will basically allow us to blend the painting between multiple layers. So just right click somewhere for now and type in landscape layer blend. There we go. Landscape layer blend. We're looking for that node. So just highlight that node just by clicking on it and look to the left and you will see the option here called layers. Since we have three layers, we have three sets of textures, we're going to add three layers. So click the plus icon three times like so. 
So now we can actually name these layers however we want. Let's just go something like one, two, and uh, hmm, I wonder what we should name this next one. Anybody else vote for three? Let's go with three. So now we have this nice landscape layer blend with layer one, two, and three, which we can move more over to this section here. We can actually drag the uh, one landscape material node down and we can connect the output of our make material attributes into layer one, two, and three, just like so. Layer one, layer two, and good old layer three. There we go, layer one, two, three. Now, in order to connect our layer blends to our finished material, select anywhere on the empty space, just left click somewhere so no nodes are highlighted. And then in the left panel over here, look under the material section, for the use material attributes tick box and tick it. You also notice that what happens here when we do that is our landscape material, well, it uh, shrinks. It, it, it just has one little output pin connected. Now, mine automatically connected when I did that, but yours probably may or may not do that. Either way, drag the landscape material blend to our material attributes like so. Now is probably a good time to save our work. I tend to be a chronic saver. I'm always pressing Control S on my keyboard as I work, so I forget to mention it, but generally a good idea to save early and save often. Now let us head back to our map and let's look at our content browser. Here's our landscape material, and if you recall from our previous lesson on auto landscape material, let's go ahead and create a material instance. So right click on our material, and then create material instance and it gives itself a name underscore INST. That'll be perfectly fine for our purposes. So let us now apply our landscape into our landscape. So select our landscape in the outliner or in the viewport and go to the details panel. And we're going to scroll down until we find the landscape material. And now we're going to select our landscape material INST instance file. And we're just going to put that in with the little arrow like so. Now, just like before, we got the gray cloudy looking material. That's okay. All we need to do is put in our layer info. So head back to the landscape mode and then go into the paint section here and scroll down until you see layers and go right ahead and we can click the little plus icon to create a weight blended layer. So let's go ahead and create our weight blended layer for each of the layers that we have. Weight blended layer number two and weight blended layer number three. So now if we select one of our layers, here's our base layer number one. Painting with that will do, well, nothing much because it's already painted in that color. That's our starting point. Uh, if we select layer two, we can paint with layer two. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see there it shows up as a little bit of a different color. Layer three, of course, we can paint with a different color. Now, at the moment, we don't see much happening. That is because of our tiling parameter. So let's fix that. So let's open up our landscape material underscore ins, our material instance. And let's move that into its own window so we can actually see what's happening like so. And this is the only parameter. Remember from our landscape auto material and our water material, we were dealing with material instances and they had all sorts of parameters that had been programmed into them by whoever created them. Well, we've created our own this time. And this time, well, we only have one and it is the tile parameter. If you remember in our landscape material, we set our tile parameter right up in here. So what we're gonna do since our default value is actually zero, we're gonna just go ahead and set that to something else. Let's try a value of one. Okay, so now we've got a value of one and you can see that the material texture is actually starting to show up a little bit like something. It's still very, there's our, there's our tiny little cobblestone. So that's pretty small. Let's maybe try a value of five, value of one. Uh, you know what? I think I might've been going, I was going in the wrong direction. Smaller is bigger and bigger is smaller. So let's try 0 0.2. Okay, so there's 0 0.2. And now we can actually see the textures show up. So there's our muddy looking ground. There's our cobblestone. And over here's our, our brick. So we've made our own landscape material. It's crude. It's basic. It's simple. But I think it's kind of a good way to close this module because we've kind of seen it from the reverse side of a fully completed instance material, etc. Now we have a basic understanding of how to create one 
our own. And beyond this, uh, we can get into great layers of complexity. Like I say, a whole course would be required to do material and landscaping uh, creation uh, with any amount of great detail and depth. So that uh, I might be a course on that in the future, but for now it is I think enough to know how the whole picture fits together. And I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. This lesson is from my Unreal Engine Beginners course. You can get access to the entire course on my Patreon page. All of my Patreons get full access to all of my courses. And I will be adding more courses and tutorials over time. Links in the description. Thank you for all the support.